Hi, everyone. Welcome to Homeroom with Sal. We have a very exciting conversation, and I also have two temporary co-hosts today because our guest is a bit of a, a hero for them. We have a bit of a chess household. Uh, so we're going to have a, a, a hopefully a very uh, engaging conversation with Magnus Carlsen, world chess champion, highest rated chess player about all things chess and life and getting better at things that might seem hard at first. But before we jump into that conversation, I will give my standard announcements. First of all, a reminder that Khan Academy is a not-for-profit. We can only exist through philanthropic donations. So if you're in a position to do so, please think about going to khanacademy.org slash donate. Also want to give a special shout out to a whole series of organizations that really helped step up when it was clear that the world was depending on Khan Academy more than ever during the pandemic, and we were running at a deficit. So special thanks to Bank of America, AT&T, Google.org, Novartis, Fastly, and General Motors, and our many other supporters of all levels, hundreds of thousands of folks uh, who donate whatever they can to make Khan Academy a possibility. Also want to remind everyone that there is a podcast version of this live stream wherever you get your podcasts, Homeroom with Sal, the podcast. So with that, I'm excited to introduce Magnus, world chess champion. Magnus, great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great to be here. And and this is a very special occasion. We've never had uh, quite this many uh, uh, co-hosts on on this on this session. <laughs> it's because of you. You know, maybe we're getting so many questions that are coming in over social media and beyond. Maybe a good place to start is, you know, wh where when you were young, when did you first realize that you had, for lack of a better word, a gift that chess was something that you were drawn to and that you might be able to stand out in? I think it sort of started when I was uh, nine and a half years old. Uh, I, I'd started playing chess a little bit later than, uh, than many of the other kids, but I could notice that I was, uh, I was uh, sponging up information in a way that they were not. So like, I, I would play tournaments with kids my age pretty much every weekend and I could feel that I was sort of improving week by week by week and uh, and and they were not and I realized that I had just uh, much more of a passion and, and a drive to do this than than they had so I think that's that's when I, I realized that I could actually be very good at this and and we have questions coming in from Instagram creation. Uh, ask who taught you how to play chess? Who, how did you get introduced to the game? And you mentioned it was relatively late for someone who gets to your level of chess. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, my my father is quite a keen chess player. Um, he still enjoys playing uh, playing playing chess uh, a lot. I would say he plays probably more chess than I do, to be to be honest. Um, uh, he taught uh, taught me and my sister at a fairly young age, uh, but up till the age I was uh, I was eight, uh, I, I really didn't didn't know much at all. Uh, but certainly without him, I would never have um, pursued chess the way that I, I did. And and we have a ton of questions you can imagine from uh, uh, both experienced and beginner chess players from Instagram. Clara is asking and. I'm curious whether you followed your own advice, but what is the most important thing beginners should work on to get better at chess? And what were you working on when you were a beginner? The thing is, I don't think I was working on anything in particular. Um, so we had some, uh, some chess books and magazines at home, so I would read them. Um, and there was this own there was this uh chess chess board we had so i would move the pieces around sometimes trying to imitate the games that i'd seen seen there but like after learning the very uh basics and the rules from from my father it was more really a case of me just trying out um different things and seeing what worked was it really, you know, just when as you started playing other people, it was a bit of a rocket ship. You just realized, hey, there's things you're processing that other people aren't. You're getting better faster. Were there times that you were starting to plateau and you had to do certain things to get out of that to get to another level? Uh, there were certainly uh, 
there were certainly times when I was younger when yeah I couldn't reach um, reach that next level immediately and and in hindsight uh, obviously that's that's something that ha happens to everybody. Um, what I believed back then is I had this sort of irrational confidence that uh, these are sort of these are temporary setbacks. Like the only reason why I'm not progressing to the next level is because uh, I've had some bad luck, or in this particular tournament I wasn't able to to show my best. So I always believe that I'm going to pull through. Like next tournament, next game, that that's going to be that's going to be mine. Uh, and I think that mentality more than anything else is what um, allowed me uh, allowed me to uh, to push to push through. Yeah, and you know, I I'm asking you all of these questions because uh, people might not realize I'm going to play a computerized ten year old version of you uh, in a, in, a, in a few days. So I'm trying to get as many tips as possible to improve my chess game. And, and you probably, uh, here's the little card about, uh, we're going to, I'm going to be playing your computerized 10 year old Magnus. And I, I, I'm a reasonably serious amateur, but I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to raise anyone's expectations, uh, too much. And, and Magnus, you probably don't remember this, but about, I would like to say about four or five years ago, we actually played each other at an event uh, this was at out here in Silicon Valley where I was randomly selected from a hat. I was one of four people to play you. You were blindfolded. I know you probably do this a lot, but it was very memorable for me. It was, it, it, I, and, and I was the last person standing. Uh, so that was a, um, an I exciting was blindfolded day. blindfolded time simul or... Is yes, that it was one? blindfolded yeah. Uh, time simul. Yeah, then, then, I, then I remember, yeah. I'm sure that game you remember vividly in your head as, you know. <laughs> so, so. Uh, no, is but, that uh, the game where I forgot the position was? Yes, you do remember that game. Yeah. I, I briefly I briefly had an advantage. I, I tell people this, they I don't know. believe. I think I blended a rook or something because I... I I misremembered one of the puns as, as far yes, as I can... Yes, I, I was up a rook at one point in the game and and I tell this to everyone who would listen. I was at one point at an advantage versus Magnus Carlson, and then I later tell him that you were blindfolded playing four other people, and I think you even had might, might have had less time on your clock than I did. <laughs> but, but it was good for my self esteem. I remember no. the moment where I saw that I'm like, he's he's doing something really deep, something really deep, because I think I can just <laughs> take this. <run. laughs> no, I. I surprisingly often when you see a very strong player appear to to miss something obvious they just missed it so uh that's what i i keep telling telling everybody if it looks like your opponent missed something and you can't see why they didn't they probably did that's actually good life advice because i think all the time we, we question when when there's something good good happening you know i think this relates actually my my two, two of my kids uh who are very set, serious chess players is imran and this is azad who've been hanging out here why don't you all ask your questions they're actually missing schoolwork for this i'm not missing schoolwork uh, well okay <laughs> <laughs> ask your question azad and imran you ask your question and I'll, I'll i'll follow up what's your question imran azad how do you beat all the people <laughs> How do you beat all the people? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna put that in the. Oh, well, I, I, do you have a response to that? <laughs> How do you beat all the people? <laughs> um, I don't know to be honest. Uh, and I I don't beat all of them. Uh, more talent, harder work. Who knows? <laughs> talent and hard work. You hear that, Azad? Yes. Okay. And and Imr Imran, what's your question? So, like, when you play blindfolded, like you get it you get against my dad. Like, is there any specific, like, way that you can memorize the entire multiple boards in your head? Or do you just do it? I think you sort of store them in different parts of your brain. So it's really, uh, it's really only, only necessary to have um, one board at a time. Uh, but it, it's good to, uh, um, it's good to have some, some kind of face or some kind of name that you connect with with a, with a certain board so it's easier to distinguish them from each other yeah i mean and it's following on actually on both of their questions famously and i think a lot of people and you've commented on queen's gambit a lot of people are really getting into chess these days but it does seem like people who can perform even close to your level seem to have almost superhuman memories 
And it seems like you do remember a lot of your, I mean, the fact that you remembered that game versus me, which is you know probably the least important game you've ever played, um, does speak to that. Is this something you've trained? Is it only in chess or do you have ability to me memorize scenarios and visualize things outside of chess as well? I would say that I, when I was young, I had a very, very good memory. Uh, now it's now it's not so so great anymore. Uh, I would say at this point, my memory is, is nothing exceptional. Like I can remember, uh, I can remember patterns. Still, I can remember the broad ideas, uh, but I cannot remember everything. Like I mean, let me tell you that when I was young, when I was a um, when I was a when I was a teenager, uh, at least in my early teens, like there is no way uh, that I would be able to to only tell you that I blundered a rook at some point because I displaced my um, displaced my pawn. Uh, back then, I would have been able to tell you the whole game and and details uh, about it. Um, so I think uh, I think now it's it's more. As you get older, it's it's more it's more about um, it's more about re remembering the the broad lines of everything, and uh, I don't don't think I'm uh, really exceptional there. And and I, I think you're probably being be, being humble, but it is fascinating that you're saying that in some ways, your how your brain tackles chess, and you've stayed at the top of your game this entire time, but it has transitioned from being more, I guess you could say memory intensive or computational intensive and now it's more almost pattern recognition uh, is, is what yeah. i'm hearing and there's there's a question from instagram brian it's related to this does being a world champion stop you from constantly trying to improve your chess you know how, how do you know how, how do you get better when 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 you're frankly you're you're the best right now how how, how do you push yourself to be better frankly uh the emphasis for me is on learning and I don't know exactly how that is going to make me a better chess player, uh, but I feel as though my understanding of chess is, is evolving. Uh, looking at my games, let's say five, six years ago, I would say that my understanding of the game was considerably, considerably worse back then. My results weren't necessarily worse, um, but that is the fascinating part for me is is that it's it's the game is the game is evolving. My understanding it's is evolving, um, and always lear learning something new. Um, and that really is enough motivation for me uh, to to keep on keep on learning whether. It will make me a better chess player. Um, I don't know because uh, sometimes in chess, ignorance really can be can be bliss. Because um, if you have sometimes, if you have less knowledge, uh, but knowledge that you are confident about, it can be better than just having uh, many, many, uh, many, many ideas, many, many uh, thoughts that you. Uh, that you it just makes you overthink. That's fascinating. I, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm really actually blown away by that the, the comment where you say that four or five years ago your understanding of the game was much less deep than it is today because four or five years ago you were already world chess champion and you're saying that you you had a you had a, a a more superficial understanding of the game. So I mean, it's fascinating that there's still layers that you are uncovering even after becoming world chess champion. Yeah, absolutely, uh, and I think that happens to um to all chess players because the game is evolving and it's it's the strategy strategy for for everybody that um uh, the more you know um the the worse you play becomes at some point and, and i'm curious you know as someone who is a, 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 a an amateur chess player but i'm sure even many experienced chess players what goes on in your head you, you know in a lot of chess someone like me I might recognize certain things, but I'm also doing a lot of the scenarios. Well, if I do this, they're going to do this. If I do this, they're going to do this. And I can go to down that tree, maybe three or four or five moves at best. Uh, are you doing that same type of thing? Wait, if I do this, they do that. 
or is it is it something else? Oh, it can be. Uh, but I think I since I'm much more experienced, I would use sort of my long-term memory uh, more than, than my, my short-term. But clearly, sometimes you do have to to calculate. And then it's, uh, as you say, no, no deeper than, yeah, if I do this, you will have to do this. Uh, and then, then I'll do, do that and so on. And then there may be... Um, two or three options are on, on each move. So the, the tree of variation sort of becomes um, broader and, and messier. But um, at, at the end of the day, you can't escape sort of calculation by, by, by brute force, uh, no, matter, no matter how, how much you, you want to play on intuition and uh, strategy rather than tactics. I can imagine. And we have a question here from Facebook, Margot McGinnis, who's actually helped coordinate the, the, the first time we played and now this time that I'm going to be playing versus the digital you. But what was your most, this is Margot's question, what was your most memorable or nerve-wracking match? And I'll add to this, do you get, how do you deal with stress? Do you get nervous during matches? Uh, yeah, I would certainly say the uh, the first World Championship match um, at the, uh, that I had in 2013, at the start, I was so so nervous that I dropped one of my pieces on the on the first move, <laughs> uh, and uh, which is kind of sort of fascinating um, because even at that point, I was the highest rated player in the world and I was very experienced. But the task of playing a world championship was so daunting to me that uh, um, that for the first four games or yeah, three or four games, I was still um, unbelievably nervous because it was something that was absolutely new to me. And, and how do you deal with that? Do you just say, you know, breathe, I'm one move at a time kind of thing? I don't know how to deal with it, to be honest. So the day, the way that I dealt with it was uh, I played one good game and then my confidence was back and I didn't have a care in the world. <laughs> and like very often people search for um like do i have any method or deeper meaning to what i do but what i explained at the beginning was um my method was mainly trial and error and it still is to some ex some extent uh that i find out what works for me uh, at some point simply by um by by experiencing it not not necessarily by by good planning and, and do you ever while you're in the middle of a game I mean, uh, less experience we always be oh i can't believe i made that move like that was a but how often does that happen to you that you're like oh my god that was a careless mistake or i can't believe i did that every single game <laughs> uh yeah i can't remember a single one where uh where i haven't um where i haven't had those those thoughts like sometimes it would be a massive blunder another um another time it will be an unavoidable uh, inaccuracy uh but every time it's like you've played chess your whole life and still you can't figure this out <laughs> it's uh yeah it's it's the same and, and it, it sounds like, you know, to your earlier comment about that that moment, which I, I will never stop bragging about, where I had an advantage versus you playing blindfolded against four other people, um, is, 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 is what you said earlier. I mean, you, you probably hide it well, because now when you make what you know is to be a mistake or you miss something, most other people will probably see it as a, a deep insight, <laughs> something that <laughs> it probably scares them. Yeah, normally it's just uh, it's just a mess up. <laughs> that's what it is you, you know there's a lot of questions coming in about uh you know chess and your life uh you know well, i guess this is a question for youtube ghost tommy how's chess affected your life uh, how have you it, has it improved you uh and i'll extend that question of how are you viewing chess and your life going forward and you've achieved the top of your game literally at a very very young age 
you're still very, very young. What do you see as the future? Do you feel, you know, defending your title? Do you, is this right? You're, you're constantly on your game or is it really just the love of the game? And, and what, what else is going on outside of chess? Uh, no, really, I, I just want to, uh, want to learn. Um, and playing both tournaments and casual games uh, still give me still give me uh, satisfaction and, and joy. So for the moment, I haven't really thought too much about uh, anything else. Um, whatever titles uh, may be out there, that's uh, that's not the main motivation at this point. Um, uh, in that case, I feel like it's just come what come what may. Uh, it's it's about um, it's about learning and and having fun. To be honest, yeah, no, it's it's good to hear that. I mean, it, it's amazing when you even said that how much more you've learned about the game of chess over the last four or five years when you were already at the top of your game. It really does sound like there's this opportunity, this journey. There's a beauty in the game that never never gets old. And related to that, there's a question here from Facebook, Cynthia Hurtado. And this is this is a good question, something I've always wondered. What do you think about the rise of chess engines and, and the digital age of chess? How has that changed the game? How has that changed your thinking? Is it different to play against a supercomputer versus a, a great human player? Uh, frankly, I don't play, play a lot against computers. Uh, like basically, the only time that I play against computer opponents is when I play my own app, uh, and uh, computers have changed dramatically uh, the way that we prepare for um, for games. Um, not necessarily for for the better, uh, because it's left sort of less scope for. Um, for creativity. Um, I think computers, though, have made the game much more accessible for, for casual fans because now you can sort of see, uh, you can see a score and, and they can also aid in giving you instant feedback when you play your, your, your games. So I, I guess overall, um, they, they've certainly been a positive, uh, but, uh, in terms of how I view uh, chess engines, I view them as as uh, more of a um, for me a necessary evil than 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 a good good thing. Um, to me, it would be uh, um, uh, yeah, the game would be just as interesting without uh, computer analysis. And and. You know, you, you said a really interesting thing that I've heard great chess players say, you know, cr the creativity of the game, the beauty of the game. And I definitely have glimpses of that when I sometimes play. But m double click on that a little bit. What do you mean where it says, you know, when you play against human versus human, there's maybe a little more space for creativity. What does that mean? It just means that uh, humans have, they have, uh, they have emotions, they have actual thoughts. So you can, it's sort of a game of, of both some emotion and, and, and ideas. And with computers, it just becomes um, technique, basically. Mm -hmm. it's, it's only about technique. And uh, that's why I find it in general less interesting. Is that part of your game? I, mean, I find it fascinating. You know, chess famously was built off of a metaphor for real warfare in, in the real world, ancient warfare. And ancient warfare, we all know, isn't just who is the best tactical fighter. It is there's psychology, there's tricks, there's uh, there's feints. How much do you? How much of that is a game at, a, at at the very highest level? Where you know, I do imagine these people who are playing with each other can, you know, they're thinking way down the road. They can think about the positions. They can think about all these things. How much of is is it playing with the other person's emotions, or tricking them, or making them not see something? Kind of do a feint of hand, things like that. I think there's more uh, the faster the games the more there's room for all sorts of uh, of uh, trickery uh, that 
to my mind makes makes the game more more interesting. Uh, I I think when you have more again as you have more and more time, it becomes becomes more uh, more technical. Um, but certainly at shorter time controls, there's a, there's a lot of uh, lot of psychology uh, involved, and it then it's there's much more room to um, to sort of adjust your strategy according to to your your, your opponents. Yeah, and and you know when you when you uh, I think a lot of people have watched Queen's Gambit. I've saw it, seen on social media you've commented on Queen's Gambit a good bit. I mean, I am curious in this forum. You know, what are your thoughts about it? And and do you think it was pretty realistic to the game of chess? And you know, the the main character in Queen's Gambit, she famously is is, is kind of an intuitive player uh, versus a a kind of a computational. I'm sure she's doing some of that too, or at least the the, the character would. Well, what are your thoughts about it? And what's what's it done to the game of chess? Uh, well, I think the only reason she can be intuitive is that she studied very, very hard, and uh, that's uh, what I, one of the things I love to see uh, about the series is that she uh, she studies so so hard, and she has such great respect for for the game. Uh, also, I feel like they did the chess. Uh, pretty pretty well there. Um, the fragments from from games were very uh, realistic and um, and and sometimes beautiful as well. Uh, uh, when it comes to to the atmosphere around the tournaments and so on, I guess some things are are, are fictionalized. But overall, I I was very very happy with it and um, hopefully. Um, People will watch it, and they will not be uh, be scared, but rather uh, encouraged to um, to to play chess. Yeah, and, and you know, there's so many questions. And I know we're we're running low on time, but I'll, I'll ask a few more of these. Uh, really, around how do you cope with, especially in the early days when maybe you were getting beaten every now and then? How did you deal with that failure? Uh, and and how do you how do you manage your own emotions? I mean, are there times that you get where you, you're you're feeling either bad about yourself or angry? Uh, or or frustrated with a given opponent. I have to say that when I was young, and I guess I lost a lot more than I do I do now. I didn't I didn't care so much about losses because I I didn't expect to win all the time. Uh, as as I said, it was like I wanted to play stronger players so that I that I could learn the most. And it was not about it was not about winning. I I just wanted to to sort of get to to the next next level like um that i could match up with stronger and stronger uh opponents and then beat them eventually um in recent years when i've become used to being at the top most of the time uh, yeah now losing losing hurts uh I, i'm not gonna lie there like every every time and it's not it's not even losing like i might be equally upset after a game that i won uh, as a game that i lost if i feel like i did something uh, i made a mistake that i could easy easily have avoided or i didn't act professionally uh, enough in in the way that i i executed the game um so uh yeah um 20 years of playing playing chess is not Prevented me from having sort of um, emotional reactions to to things that happen uh, at the chessboard. And and how do you deal? You know, one of the things that I think is hard when when people have been so successful for so long. Do you sometimes model in your mind what if five years, ten years in the future, the next Magnus Carlsen comes and is able to beat me? Is that something that you think about? Is that how would you? How do you think you, that would that would affect you if, if that happened? <laughs> uh, I remember I was asked this question, uh, I think, 11 years ago. And at that point, it upset me because they worded the question as, what What are you going to do when that next one comes along? And I, I said very clearly that in my mind, this was a question of if. Uh, and 
also that I thought I have so many years till that will be be a be a real thing. Um I think I'm realistic enough uh though at this point to realize that I'm not gonna be able to be at the highest level for forever. So if I do want to um if I do want to keep keep on playing uh chess at the highest level, then at some point I'm going to um to start um to start regressing but um for the moment um i'm thinking like i i should still should still be in 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 my prime and that's what i should strive towards yeah no i definitely phrase it as if i'm not assuming <laughs> that anyone is gonna <laughs> I, I no, you, obviously the, the most likely scenario is that somebody's gonna surpass me so um I wouldn't say sooner rather than later, but uh, in the not too distant future. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and and hold on as long as I can. <laughs> and, and what, what, what do you, you know? The, when we think about the arc of the game of chess, how it's evolved, do do you think that the competition is only going higher and higher and higher over time? That people are understanding the game at deeper and deeper levels, or do you think some of the old greats from fifty years ago, or sixty years ago, or even a hundred years ago would actually still be greats today? I think it's a bit of both. Um, the game is certainly certainly evolving, especially with uh, with the computers has made us reevaluate a lot of the 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 truth the truth that we we um held to be self evident once upon a time uh, but i also do feel and this is going to make me sound a lot older than i am but it i do feel that some of the youngsters today uh they're not too good at the basics like i feel like the generation that I'm a part of and the generation um, before maybe understood the fundamentals of the game a little bit better than uh, than the kids do today. And I think that's partly a result of uh, um, growing up with uh, with uh, with the um, computer rather than uh, rather than a, a board. Hmm. No, it's fascinating because I'm, I'm sure the youngsters that you're talking about are 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 still quite good at chess. But you're saying even some of obviously these, these yes, the, even some of these folks. And when you say the basics, what do you mean by that? Like, what types of things do you think they they have maybe some gaps in? I think some gaps in just general positional understanding of of the game, um, and that studying. Like studying the classic games, I think has has clear clear value. Like far from everything that you learn from 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 back then is still true today. But I don't think you can develop a broad enough understanding of uh, of the game to be the best uh, by only by only training with the, with the computer. No, it's it's fascinating, and yes, you you do sound older than you are. <laughs> yeah, well, you're in your yeah. late 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 uh, twenties now. <laughs> yeah, I I just turned uh, thirty last last November. Um, what I will say though, I think I'm lucky to be in sort of a hybrid generation there. That I was I sort of started playing chess before, uh, before the computers were were absolutely everywhere. Uh, like I actually went to to a school with books and notebooks and so on uh, before everything became computerized and so on, and I think it's it's sort of a good position to be in to be in in, the, in that sort of a hybrid that you can you have a good knowledge of of uh, of computers but that you can also uh, you can also sort of relate to. Um, to the old way the game was was played yeah and maybe in the time we have left you know one one question that i'm sure a lot of people and people are asking this question you know what other subjects are you interested in math or physics there's sometimes connection between chess but i, I am curious have you ever done the the thought exercise if 
if you weren't world chess champion or if you didn't have this chess life in that alternate reality, what would Magnus Carlsen be doing? Yeah, uh, I've been asked it many times for sure. Never had a good answer. Uh, probably still don't. One thing that I will say, though, is that I have massive respect for people in almost any any field and i think there are a lot even fairly bright people who think that somebody like me could become good at something else with very little effort uh but i i don't really don't don't think so i think most of all i'm somebody who uh, evidently, I have some talent for for chess, but most of all, I've spent a lot of time working on it and thinking uh, about it. And I think that I'm not necessarily the fastest at at anything. Uh, I I need some some time. I uh, and then then I I just keep 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 learning. But to think of something else. Uh, no, I don't think like there's anything that I could just um, that I could imagine I would be anywhere um, equally as as good at. Uh, in that case, I would have to to spend nearly all my time on it as as I have with chess. Yeah, I mean, well, it does seem like the mindset that you've taken to chess, and I, I, there are there's probably things your mind can do that would be very useful in other fields. Even if, even if we if we limit ourselves to game, do you play other games, or have you ever you know famously a lot of elite athletes who you know Michael Jordan tried golf, LeBron James. I, I recently read an article of like he could have been a football player. Have you thought, well, there's other games I could have played, um, you know, Go or Mahjong or just something else? Um, have you ever tried? Have you ever tried these things, or or, or do you even play other games outside of chess? The thing is, for something like Go, I feel like chess might almost be uh, having spent a lot of time on chess might almost be a uh, disadvantage, uh, because I think that the mindset there is is very different. And for a chess player, Go seems very, very, uh, very abstract compared to um, compared to chess. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm great at anything else. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've tried games like I play play poker with my friends uh, occasionally without being particularly great at it. I've tried, um, yeah, I tried shogi go briefly without excelling at any any of those uh, things. So I really, I really wouldn't know. You know, I just imagine playing poker or any other game against you, and I do think you you have an intimidation factor, which would play play to your strength. <laughs> it uh, goes it away. Would... It goes away very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I know, I know we're all out of time. I mean, first of all, thank you so much. I look forward to playing the robot version of you, which I still will. I'm pretty sure will crush me, uh, but I, I'm going to practice with my. Uh, co-conspirators that you met earlier my my older yeah. is you know he's 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 pretty decent he's i think just gotten better than me <laughs> so he's uh, he gives me my run for the money but That's magnus thank good. you so much yeah you know th thank you so much you know, obviously uh, fascinating what you've been able to accomplish in chess but i think even more chess as a metaphor for life is very powerful and what you've been able to do in the game and just understanding a little bit of how you think about chess and life i think has a lot of insights that go well beyond chess uh so so thank you so much for for joining us today Th thank you so much for for having me and uh all the best to 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 all of you in this difficult time great thank you so much magnus so thanks everyone for joining uh, today's homeroom. Uh, as uh, all you know, I, I could have talked to Magnus for a few more hours. I I I feel like we got glimpses into what goes on in his mind, uh, both intellectually and emotionally. Uh, and you know, some of the takeaways he's he's a human being just like the rest of us. But it, it would be it, it would be fun to to be able to see a chessboard the way that he sees a chessboard. Uh, but you can see uh, a ten year old robot version of Magnus uh, crushing me likely in chess. It's all about setting expectations in the right place. Um, <laughs> we're gonna have a a, a live event uh, in, a, in a as as that card had shown in a, in a couple of days. Uh, 
But uh, thank you all for, for joining. It's going to be at championschesstour.com. Uh, and I'm definitely part of the uh, the entertainment more than the serious competition. Although I, I do play a little bit, as as Magnus said, it's now documented. He not only not only he he remembers the game, which I find incredibly flattering, uh, but uh, he he also admitted that I briefly had a moment when he he forgot something because he was playing for other people simultaneously without with a blindfold on. Uh, but with that, thanks so much for uh, coming to this today's homeroom, and I will see y'all uh, next week. I think. See you then.